Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back again to my YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the very first time, my name is Caroline and the purpose of today's video is to just help those who might be new to IVF, going through IVF, or know someone or have a loved one that is currently going through IVF for the first time. If you've already gone through the process, this video might not be for you. It might not um, be very helpful for you in any way, but if you are new to the IVF process or going through it yourself, I wanted to touch on a few points to help you manage your expectations and cope during stress during your IVF cycle. Um, I had made a video on my page um, with just a few basics for individuals who again are new to the IVF process, just giving them a bit of background to help them be more familiar with the process as far as the lab is concerned because I am an embryologist in the lab and I had mentioned in that video um, for clinical questions and things like that, insights on the clinical side, you will have to ask your provider, nurse, um, those questions. But again, these videos are about the laboratory side of things. And today I just wanted to give you a few pointers um, for you to be able to manage your expectations and cope with the stresses that come with an IVF cycle. The very first point that I actually wanted to mention is that mentally preparing yourself for the possibility of multiple cycles, um, especially for the older patients, there is a chance that you might not have very many follicles or very many eggs. Um, so very many eggs would not be retrieved and make it so that you perhaps might not have any sufficient embryos at the end of your cycle. But whatever the reason, I just wanted to let you all know that it'd be very important to mentally prepare yourself for the possibility that you might have to do multiple cycles. And also being flexible and open to the possibility of different um, types of cycles. Again, in my previous video, I touched on different types of cycles that you can do besides IVF um, and things like that and different things that within IVF itself. So just be open and flexible to um, changes within your plan and things like that. I also wanted to touch on being realistic with the timeline. A lot of individuals think that um, it's a very quick process. Um, your provider will have you on medications, not only before your retrieval, which is when we go and, and, and retrieve those eggs, but also on you'll be put on medication to prepare your uterus for your transfer. And so from retrieval to your transfer, it could be two to three months sometimes, Four. And another thing that goes into that is um, if individuals choose to do pre-implantation genetic testing on their embryos, it takes a while to get those results back. And by the time you speak and discuss those results with your physician, it might be a couple months as well. Um, I have had patients that did not take their transfer medications properly due to um, difference in uh instructions from the pharmacy versus the physician. Always listen to your physician. And so by the time they got to transfer day, they weren't able to actually get that transfer because they used their meds wrong. And so um, if you also are starting a cycle and you had frozen embryos at a different location or at long-term storage, just the transport of the human tissue also takes um, some time. And so from start to finish, your entire cycle could be anywhere from two, three months, sometimes four months. And so I also wanted to bring that up um, so that because a lot of people aren't really realistic with how long the IVF process actually takes. Um, the third point I wanted to give um, under managing your expectations during IVF is that the medications that you are on at every stage um, makes a woman very, very emotional. And so um, I implore the people around you to be um, more compassionate and patient, but also recognizing that if you are on the meds, that a lot of times the emotions, like the intensity of the emotions that come with the medication, um, just associating that with the meds in, in most instances and giving the some grace to the laboratory personnel, to, to the clinical personnel and things like that, because we really do our very best in the lab um, and on the clinical side too, I'm sure. Um, so just be keeping that in mind as well. And I also wanted to include um, 
a part in this video of if for those of you who are interested in IVF success rates per uh, per clinic, per provider, SART.org is one of the sites that you can actually use to look into that. If you go into Google.com and type in IVF success rates SART, it will be the very first option that pops up. If you click on that, it'll take you to SART.org. And from there, you can actually look into what exactly is SART. And uh, essentially, SART is a regulatory agency that monitors um, IVF clinics and outcomes and things like that across the country. So you can look at what SART is and also navigate to the top to find a clinic or to find a provider directly from this website. So those are the pointers that I actually wanted to talk about under managing your expectations. And so now I'm going to quickly change uh, the course to um, coping with the emotional stressors during IVF. Um, the most important uh, tip that I can give is to have a very strong support system, be it, um, of course, we would hope that it's the spouse that's also going through this with you, um, but also having close friends or family members that can share in this moment with you um, and so that you can be able to cope with not just the emotions that come with taking the meds but god forbid any failed cycles or anything like that it's really important to have um, people who advocate for you people who are also there for you emotionally during this time um, and don't be afraid to establish open dialogue with your uh, provider with the laboratory personnel um, there are clinical individuals and laboratory people that are here to answer your questions. So open dialogue, always um, ask your questions, let us know your concerns and how we can put um, your mind at ease during this time. And also be try your best to celebrate every single milestone after retrieval um, after every single step of this process, allow yourself to celebrate the milestones because remember, every single step in this process just means you're one step closer to creating that family that you want. Um, and then practice mindfulness. If you meditate, if you um, pray, I'm a praying individual myself, um, but just if you journal, whatever it is, just acknowledging your emotions during this time and that helps with validating them. Um, and it's also something that you can also go back to, always go back to after you've gone through this process to look and to see um, what all was actually involved in this. So definitely try to practice mindfulness during this um, because one thing that I've noticed, and I'm actually going to share a short um, story about something that actually happened to me in the lab um, because it's very important to keep the right attitude during this process. The attitude part is really big. Your doctors and your nurses can only do so much when it comes to the meds. Um, we can only do so much in the lab with the eggs and the sperm samples that we receive. At the end of the day, it's the attitude that you and your spouse has um, that actually makes a huge difference. Um, I remember there was a, a, a patient and she was 46 years old and she was going through the IVF process on her own. She had decided to purchase donor sperm and do a process and she had not found a partner. And so she, we found very few eggs for her, but she did end up having um, an embryo frozen at the end. And about a month or two later, she came back for a transfer and she was just super excited, super happy. She had the best attitude, even though her doctor and the lab staff, we, we had prepared her because the quality of the embryo was fair. It wasn't the best quality embryo, but it was fair. It was not degenerate in any way. And so we went ahead and froze it for her just to give her a chance at having this baby. And so we prepared her mentally that, hey, it's a fair quality embryo, but she maintained a great attitude. She was very um, grateful for the lab staff, the clinical staff that helped her throughout this process and supported her. She was very thankful and grateful and she was excited, she was expectant. And we went ahead and transferred that fair quality embryo into her and she ended up 
pregnant with twins. That single embryo did uh, split. She ended up uh, pregnant with twins and went on to have healthy pregnancy and delivery. And so it's really, really, really important to keep the right attitude during a process like this and make sure that you and your spouse are always on the same page and that you are each other's advocate. You guys support each other throughout this process because I have another story that illustrates what happens when that doesn't happen. So contrary to what happened with this woman, I had a relatively young um, couple, though the woman was in her mid 30s. Her husband was in his early 40s and they had come in um, and had gone through a cycle. She had plenty of eggs. We froze a lot of embryos for her. Um, and so she came back for her very first transfer. And there was communication, I suppose, between her and her doc where she asked for the best quality embryo to be thawed and transferred. Um, and since we had done genetic testing on that embryo, it so happened that that embryo was a female embryo. Well, come transfer day, her partner did not um, consent for us to transfer that female embryo. He absolutely did not want um, a female embryo transferred. Um, none of us are sure whether it was religious purposes or anything cultural or anything like that. Um, but they were they were not in accord they were they were not in agreement and it was very taxing emotionally for her the, the day of the transfer to have that embryo frozen and um, her and her husband were essentially just divided and she was very very upset um, when she did finally come back to transfer that female embryo um, unfortunately the transfer did not take and a few transfers after that did not take um, and I'm not really sure uh, what ended up happening whether they successfully had a baby um, through throughout all of that because I ended up leaving the practice but that just goes to show one instance where um, you definitely want to be on the same page as your spouse and you definitely want to keep the stress keep the anxiety levels to a low and trust the process and be expectant and mind your attitude so these are the tips that I would give um, regarding not only managing your expectations, but also coping with the stressors of IVF. I really, really do hope that if you're going through this, I wish you nothing but the very best in your cycle. Um, I hope that you have the outcome that you are hoping and praying for. Um, and I do hope that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and come back to watch more videos. But until then, I'll see you all in my next video.